And now on the show, somebody that uh, was my babysitter as a child, somebody that was in Mighty Ducks D2 and D3, somebody that we know as Jim Fox once called Woo 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 Kenny Woo, <laughs> Justin Wong. How are we doing today, sir? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, being on with us. I'm so excited that we're <laughs> having this opportunity to actually talk to you. I'm kind of starstruck right now. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the, the funny thing about that line, Woo Woo Kenny Woo, is like, that's like the most iconic line for Kenny Wu wasn't even said by Kenny Wu. <laughs> <laughs> it's still iconic nonetheless, right? Yeah. yeah. I still I still like the bite me line personally. That was my yeah. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> so uh let's go into the some of the questions here. Um obviously you're 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 originally from the Vancouver area. Uh yeah. did you play hockey as a kid and did that kind of help you get into the role as uh being Kenny Wu on the Mighty Ducks? Uh, yeah, I played hockey since I was about 10 years old, and I, I still play whenever I get a chance. Um, and I don't know if it helped me get the role, but uh, I imagine it made an impact. I mean, like, none of the none of the kids – well, none of – they're not kids anymore, but none of the other Ducks, <laughs> when they filmed the first movie, they actually didn't know how to play hockey at all, and that wasn't really a deciding factor for them. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it helped a little bit, knowing that they didn't have to – worry about my abilities uh but yeah it's uh i've been playing hockey for a long time and i love it of course being canadian and all and uh yeah uh like on a side note like oddly enough when i went for the screen test uh for d2 um flew down to la and did a scene with some of the og ducks and then and then the new ducks and then i noticed that some of the new ducks had other people also you know, jumping, like doing it, their, their turn in the scene where Ken Wu didn't have anybody else. And I was just like, is this a good sign? I, I hope so. <laughs> and it turned out it was. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, so I, this is another question I have here. They portrayed you as obviously a figure skater that had turned into a hockey player. Um, did they, did you already know a little bit about figure skating or was that something they had to have you like learn a little bit? Cause I know you did a few like figure skating tricks throughout the movies. Um, I had no idea how to figure skate <laughs> and it's, uh, it's actually very different from playing hockey, like very different. So on that, uh, that first scene where the new ducks are introduced and they introduce Kenny Wu, that's the only time they actually had me wear figure skates. So then okay. uh, when I put those things on, I got out onto the ice. And the biggest difference between hockey skating and figure skating is hockey, you get low. Mm -hmm. Figure skating, you're very upright and proper. Like you get points on, on that. So when you get low, your skates go forward and those toe picks dig right into the ice. So I got on the ice and fell flat on my face. That's oh, the first no. thing I did with figure <laughs> skates. So I got the, I got the equipment trainers to immediately shave that stuff off. Um, so that's that's my experience with figure skating is that one moment. And then in the third movie, between the second and third movie, I actually got into inline rollerblading quite a bit. So I was able to do 360s, 180s. Uh, I was able to pull off a 540, but never like a triple axle or anything, which I believe is three times around, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, but yeah, so in the third movie, there is one scene, the one scene where I actually crash into, I think, Goldberg or Julie. I yeah. don't remember who. That was me actually <laughs> doing that 360 spin. That's awesome. Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> um, so I have a question for you. Uh, prior to The Mighty Ducks, did you know that you wanted to act or was did you take any classes or was that kind of like your first role? Um, I, don't, I want to say I knew I wanted to act. But uh, my mom just kind of put me into like youth theater and stuff for like something to do. And then through that, I got an agent and then just started doing commercials, I think, from the age of like maybe seven or so. And actually, like, I don't know if I could still find like one of my old acting resumes, but like I did a, like a lot of Milton Bradley board game commercials when mm, I was a kid. Oh, really? And then uh, but then uh, I did like maybe one CBC kind of series where I played like gang member number one as a kid. <laughs> um, the, the TV show is called The Odyssey. It was about a kid kind of going into a coma. So there's like this alternate reality where there's no parents and everybody was kids. So I was gang member number one. And then 
after and then suddenly I just got a call for this audition to send a tape down and that's how I got the part and never throughout those young ages I was like yeah I want to be an actor and when I grew up it was just something that I just my mom put me into and I just did I got to miss school to go to audition so <laughs> I was like sure so when, when? Yeah. <laughs> when <is that? laughs> now it, it, does the um is it is the acting scene different in Canada as opposed to say LA I actually don't know I imagine it's way more competitive in LA um, mm -hmm. I think in Vancouver being a Hollywood North and all because so much is filmed up here um, they call the film industry in Vancouver more of a service industry because it's basically productions from down south come up and be like we want to do a movie in Vancouver and we like we'll service you to do that we'll provide everything you need all the crew you need and then and then that kind of leads to a lot of roles being filled by Vancouver actors, like maybe like just like roles that are just like a one person needs to be in an episode for one episode for a little bit. So they'll they'll play small principal roles, and then eventually a few of those actors will become more popular and and move down to LA, of course, to try to get more work. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, the scene is up here is more of like it's definitely more of a service industry. We're here to help Hollywood mm -hmm. build their movies. <laughs> um so i me and my wife obviously stalked your instagram a little bit <laughs> yeah. um so we noticed you know living in vancouver that may that uh, i'm gonna guess you're a canucks fan oh yeah oh yeah yeah so, yeah, very much I, so. It's, it's been a little rough for you guys this year so i yes. do apologize about that <laughs> <laughs> so that kind of leads into my next question obviously between d2 and d3 you guys had a couple cameos with some nhl players correct yeah all right, so um, I know they had Wayne Gretzky and Paul Correa there, and I know like Luke Robitaille, Cam Neely, and I think there was one other guy were uh, with Bombay and another scene. Were you guys able to like actually get to interact with the uh, NHL players at all? Um, I was so young, I don't remember. I know when Wayne Gretzky walked in the room, everybody was like jaws to the floor. <laughs> um, and uh, but I don't, I don't even know if I even talked to him. All I know is, all I know is, like, all I know is, I got. We all got a picture with him. I was just so happy to have that. And then with Paul Korea, Steve, like he set me up. So basically, Steve's like, we're in the cafe, like we're in the lunch lineup. Uh, we're on lunch break, and uh, he comes up to me. He's like, he taps me on the shoulder, like I think on the left side. He's like, so uh, you you a fan of Paul Korea? You, you you like him? And I was like, meh. You know, I was a Canucks fan. I was like. And even though Paul Cree is from BC, I'm just like, no, not really. And then he kind of looks over my shoulder the other way, and there's Paul Cree standing right beside me <laughs> on the other side. Oh, I was like, no. oh. So that was my interaction with Paul Cree. Um, <laughs> and then I think Luke Robitaille, uh, he, he was, I wasn't even in a scene with him, but I think we went to that Malibu house where Bombay was at meeting all these famous people. But I did get to shake his hand with like Kareem Abdul Jabbar and Christy Amaguchi. And then, funny story about Luke Robitaille is I'm an audio engineer now. And I did this uh, event where I had to mic up a bunch of these famous people, and Luke Robitaille was one of them. And I was just standing there, like actually sticking my hand up his shirt to get a, a mic up his shirt and around, around and stuff onto his head and stuff like that. And I was like, should I tell him I already met him and who I am? But. <laughs> I, I I decided to like I don't know remain professional I guess and I didn't mention anything to him about that. <laughs> Props to you though, because my husband would have flipped out. Yeah. That he we are big Pittsburgh Penguins fans. We're actually from uh, Pittsburgh, PA, and so him playing on the Pens, my, yeah. yeah, John's obsessed yeah. with him. <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a great player. I remember when he won the Cup on Detroit, like uh, when they mentioned when Luke held the cup. I just heard this like, boo, and I was like, are they <laughs> booing Luke Robitaille? <laughs> but it's, it's, it, they're saying Luke, just like how in Vancouver they said Lou for Luongo, and now I understand mm -hmm. it. They're not booing him, they're just saying his name. <laughs> I, I can relate to that because we went, yeah. uh, we, we now live in Orlando, and when we went to a Tampa game and everybody was saying cooch, I was like, why are they booing him? What's going on here? <laughs> that's not, that's not very, you know, fan like. <laughs> so, um, Obviously, the Mighty Ducks kind of really blew up when like D two came around. 
Um, it blew into the fact that now it blew up to the point that the NHL now is a franchise that is named after your guys' movies. Like how does, I mean, that's got to feel like such an accomplishment to you guys that, you know, Disney decided to make a hockey team just because of your such successful movie series. Yeah. Like it's like in any other professional sports, has that ever happened? Has like a movie spawned a professional team of, of sorts but yeah it was really cool being part of that and also really cool being like one of the first few people to like sit in the locker rooms of the of the pond which is now the honda center um i don't even know do, maybe you know did anaheim already have a team before d2 was uh, released or they kind of like coincide kind of I think it was kind of coinciding. I think they were getting yeah. ready to build the team. And then you guys yeah. were like the first ones to kind of use the arena for like yeah. hockey purposes. Yeah. So, so that was amazing being able to like skate on an NHL arena and be in an NHL locker room at the age of 12 and really <laughs> proud of that. And, uh, and yeah. And then like in what it's, it's been almost 25 years now and the, and the team had much good years. They won the cup and uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I, 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 I can't even imagine. <laughs> They're very envious, and I don't even play hockey. <laughs> I'll let you ask this one. Okay. Uh, where is it? Right there. There we go. Okay. Uh, so what was it like working with actors? And I know you said you don't you didn't remember much because you were so young. Uh, what was it like working with, like, Emilio Estevez and Joshua Jackson in the 90s? Um, so... I had already been a fan of the first Mighty Ducks, so when I got this part, the part for D2, I was literally jumping around the house, and then, <laughs> like, I don't think the screen test had Emilio there, um, but, so, like, when I went down the screen test, I saw, like, Josh walk by, and then <laughs> I saw Eldon walk by. I'm just like, oh, my God. And then, uh, and then, uh, when we went to go film the movie, we had this camp for a long time and we became all really close friends. And it was like, I just don't think too many other, there's maybe a few situations where child actors got to just hang out with kids the whole time where they're filming. Like maybe, like I remember Garrett used to say, he's like, he's done a bunch of movies, but it'd be just like him, maybe another kid and a bunch of adults. So it's just like mm -hmm. them roaming around. But, there's like what, like eight or 10 of us or 12 of us just like all having fun as kids. I imagine it was hell for the directors, <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun for us. We like, it didn't even feel like work. We were just hanging out with our friends and every once in a while, okay, you need you on camera. I was like, okay, well, I'll, we'll continue this card game later. Blah blah blah. <laughs> um, and then Emilio, man, he is, he is someone definitely to look up to for onset professionalism. He is so professional. He's so nice. He always wants to help out. He's rarely in his dressing room. He's always just hanging around, just being available. And they're actually the the thing, the one thing I remember he did for us, which was amazing, was he just took us out for a day and took us to like a uh, what do you call this? Like a fun park that has like arcade games, batting cages, go karts, and he just rented the whole place out for us. And you can literally walk up to any arcade game and just like press start and just play. You can just jump into a go-kart. I mean like safely and go around the go-karts, <laughs> go batting cages, just start hitting balls. Uh, but yeah, like he's a great guy. That's awesome. That, that, that's so good to hear. Yeah, you know, that's, that's, good to that's hear. what you want to hear as a fan, right? Yeah. So uh, to kind of lead into the next question, um, unfortunately we haven't got to see the OGs yet in game changers. Um, I'm, I'm hoping for the next episode. I'm not sure. Um, but we do know from like the Disney previews and pictures that have been posted that, of course, you, Kenny Wu, and then Connie, Fulton Reed, Banks, Guy, and Averman um, are all going to be returning. So what was yeah. it like filming 25 years, almost 25 years later? Oh, it, it was amazing. Uh, like leading up to this, it felt like there was – there was like some sort of indication that this stuff was going to sneak back into my life because I had been out of it for so long. Uh, Jordan Kerner, the executive producer of all three movies and the series, he invited us over for the 25th anniversary of the first movie. Oh. Um, and we all kind of met up then and like they even handed out all our contact information if you want to keep in touch, that sort of thing. Being in Vancouver kind of 
put me on an island. Everybody like kind of kept in touch in LA or New York. And then all of a sudden we had the Anaheim Duck Silver anniversary and then we all met up and then we exchanged mm-hmm. more contact information. Now we're able to text ourselves a bit more. And then, and then all of a sudden I get a call for this and then my friends are coming to my hometown. <laughs> and I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> I get to yeah. come around and then there's COVID. And then yeah, yeah. all we got to do, which was still a lot of fun, was we hung out in Eldon's room a lot. We watched the uh, the World Series. Eldon is a huge Dodgers fan. So we'd be sitting there watching the game. All of a sudden, Eldon would jump 10 feet in the air every time <laughs> there's a hit for the Dodgers. Uh, but we, I mean, I managed to show them around a little bit, like kind of walk around safely. We wanted to respect uh, the process of them testing us every three days, staying within our bubble. Uh, but it was a lot of fun meeting the new kids was amazing. Oh man, they're so amazing. And I love the new show. Like all the new kids are amazing. And I'm so glad that Steve Brill went down this route with bringing a whole bunch of new kids. It just kind of, I think his idea is to just sprinkle us in here and there, but not be directly related. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. We're definitely, I'm pretty sure I could tell you we are in the next episode. I think the sneak preview has already told us that. And I think, a couple media outlets has already mentioned it, but uh, having them in my hometown was fun. I'm hoping for season two so that more of my old friends could come up and I could actually <laughs> maybe go freely out to take them out to my favorite uh, restaurant spots and stuff like that. So I had a blast yeah. having them here. Yeah, we are we are thoroughly enjoying the new series. Um, we were we were skeptical at first, just because you know you don't you, you're expecting a lot out of it, right? Because the the franchise was such a such great movies, and I think he portrayed it perfectly. And our favorite, char- I, I'm going to speak for you, That's I fine. guess. Um, That's fine. I think our favorite character from the new series is Coob because <laughs> it's such he's such a relatable character, right? So this yeah. it, it goes so well with the times, like playing video games and that's that that would be my husband you know playing <laughs> nhl <laughs> and that's how you pick up a hockey player not just you know kids playing in the streets unfortunately nowadays so yeah. we're we're thoroughly enjoying it yeah. as well <laughs> yeah Coop's great and he has some great one-liners too that just pop out of nowhere <laughs> yeah yeah it's fantastic yeah. so obviously you said that the you know the crew's been up a little bit more up in your neck of the woods now um, do you guys keep in touch pretty regularly? You and the uh, kind of the OG ducks. Um, between the six of us that are in episode, we've had uh, a text thread going since the uh, filming of the episode. So we we've been keeping in touch. Uh, uh, I did see Keenan a little while ago, but since the Anaheim Silver anniversary, I haven't kept in touch with uh, much. Uh, many of the other ducks other than the ones that came up to Vancouver. Okay. I mean, you, Hey, at least you have lifelong friends out of some yeah. of the OG ducks, right? Yeah. Well, that's why I'm hoping that they could be in season two and then I could be like, Hey, come on over. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <by then. laughs> uh, so what was it like? Um, obviously COVID kind of hindered the, the filming and everything. What has it been like versus, you know, when you used to film and didn't have to get tested so frequently. And is it, is it, I can I can only imagine that's very much different than it was, you know, 25 years ago. I think everything is quite different. Well, like I've never filmed a series before, so I feel like the pace is a lot faster than it is filming a feature length. Mm-hmm. Um, but COVID, like basically, uh, from what I hear from the people that had experienced already filming the first five episodes until they got to us was that everything takes about one and a half times longer to do just because you got to sanitize uh you got to send people to testing you got you got to like you have less people on set if you want to like run to the trailer grab something they got to like pass it to someone that is allowed on like onto the camera set and that sort of thing so things just take a little bit longer Mm -hmm. um unrelated the thing that i was told that is completely different is technology with cameras like nowadays apparently you barely have to light anything back then you had these big lights that you had to move around so every single time you even change from like you facing me all of a sudden we need to get a camera facing you that's like a 30 minute setup now it's just like oh let's just turn the camera around we go let's go (laughs) so like yeah so that's that's the biggest difference i found is that things could go a lot faster that way so 
I guess things that slowed down to due to COVID are were faster in that respect. But um, the other biggest difference is the trailer they gave me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like back back during D two and D three, we got these little trailers that were kind of like closets. You would open the door and you got your little closet. There's a bed on the side, a toilet, and a sink on the end. And then if you want, and you can open up the divider between you and the person next to you. But then this time around, I had a trailer that had a fireplace. It had a oh. big screen TV. It had a fridge with water in it and it had a shower and a toilet. And I was like, this is crazy. I only spend 20 minutes in here. <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was cool. And, yeah. uh, and obviously, it was weird for me because by then, we were almost like royalty coming on set where I spent like the last 30 years of my life definitely not being that. And like coming in and like everybody be like, oh, we're so glad you're here. You're so great. I'm like, okay, sure. And then like, I'm going to get a water. It's like, oh, well, I'll get that water for you. And it's like, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, definitely that I wasn't used to uh, coming back. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're going to be spoiled for any future projects that you have. <laughs> yeah, <maybe>. We'll see. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll let you. Um, so um, obviously going into the next episode here, you mentioned, you know, you guys are going to kind of show up the older OG ducks. Is there any hints you can give our listeners before, you know, I, we get to this next episode? I don't want to give too much away. Um, what I do like to say, and I hope this isn't giving too much away, uh, is that I think the, the the OG Ducks returning, their presence is kind of pivotal to Bombay and his character. And I, th I think I'll leave it at that. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, uh, yeah uh, that's absolutely perfect. <laughs> uh, where are we at here? Yes, uh, go ahead. You can, you can go um, ahead. So if, do you have any advice for anybody that might be listening that wants to um, maybe pursue a career in like acting? Oh, hmm. <laughs> I don't know because I haven't pursued a career in acting, uh, <laughs> but I would say having a tough skin, you definitely lose way more than you win. Uh, work on your craft. I never did. And that's kind of why I fell out of it. Um, it it's, it's not easy being an actor. Uh, like it is just like other, any other job. Of course you become rich and famous, some of them, and, and some of them make good careers out of it, but it is a, it's something that you need to train on. It's like being a hockey player. If you just stop practicing playing hockey, you're not going to become a ho good hockey player. And if you stop practicing acting, you're not going to become a good actor. So that I guess would be my advice. Well, thank you. Um, so then where can our listeners find you? Do you, uh, you can give out any platforms that you have that you'd like to be followed on or any projects coming up. I know you said you're an audio engineer and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're really into photography. If I, if I looked correctly, cause your photography is amazing thank you. <laughs> on your Instagram that I've seen so far. So yeah, just lay it all out for us. <laughs> yeah. Anybody, if they want, they can follow me on Instagram. It's at Justin grown in BC, like almost like I grew like a tree in British Columbia. So Justin <laughs> grown in BC. Um, and basically, yeah, like up until now, I just post my photography that I do as a hobby. I just bought a camera maybe six years ago and I just, started taking pictures and I liked doing it and then I started editing it. So that's basically, I just wanted to share that with my friends and then some Vancouver photographers as well. And then suddenly in the last month or so, it's also become slightly uh, Kenny Wu Instagram account as well. So <laughs> there's a bit of, but like, I, I don't have much social media. So if you, if you want to find out what I've been up to, uh, that would be the place to find it. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you so very much, Justin. We enjoyed having you on. You were a delight to have. And maybe in the future, we could do this again after Game Changers and hopefully for a season two. Hopefully, yeah, if, we no ever, hope, hopefully if we ever get up to Vancouver, maybe we can uh, <laughs> grab you a drink at a bar or something to make yeah, up for this. Let their... me know if you get up here. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much.